think you the shepherd's life, Master Touchstone? Truly, shepherd. In respect of itself, it is her good life. But in respect that it is a shepherd's life, it is not. In respect that it is solitary, it pleases me well. But in respect that it is private, it is a very vile life. <laughs> now, look, you, as it's in the field, it pleases me well. But as it's not in the court, it is most Jeez. Look, it is a spare life. It fits my humor well, but as there is no more plenty in it, it goes against my stomach. Has any philosophy in me, Shepherd? No more, but that I know that the more that one sickens, the worse at ease he is. That he that wants money, means, and content is without three good friends. That the property of rain is to wet and fire to burn. And that a great cause of the night is lack of the sun. Such a one is a natural philosopher. Who was ever at court, shepherd? No, truly. Then thou art damned. Nay, I hope. Ay, truly, thou art damned, like an ill rose today, all on one side. For not being at court, for reason. If thou never wast at court, thou never sawest good manners. If thou never sawest good manners, thy manners must be wicked. And wickedness is sin, and sin is damnation. <laughs> thou art in a perilous state, shepherd. Not a wit touchstone. Those that are good manners at the court are as ridiculous in the country as the behavior of the country is most mockable at the court. You told me you salute not at the court, but you kiss your hands. That courtesy would be uncleanly if courtiers were shepherds. Instance, briefly, come instance. Why, we are still handling our ewes, and their fells, you know, are greasy. Why, do not a courtier's hands sweat? Is not the grease of a mutton any more wholesome than the sweat of a man? Shallow, shallow. You have too courtly a wit for me. I'll rest. Will thy rest damned, God help thee? Sir, I am a true laborer. I earn that I eat, get that I wear, owe no man hate, and be no man's happiness. Glad of other men's good, content with my harm, and the greatest of my pride is to see my ewes graze and my lambs suck. That is another simple sin in you, to bring the ewes and the rams together, and to offer to get the, uh, your living by the copulation of cattle, and to portray a she-lamb of twelve months to some crooked-pated old cuckoldy ram out of any reasonable match. If thou beest not damned for this, the devil himself shall have no shepherds. Here comes your master again, oh. this is brother. From the east to western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. Her work being mounted on the wind through all the world fairs, Rosalind. All the pictures fairest lined are but black to Rosalind. Let no fair be kept in mind but the fair of Rosalind. If a heart do lack a hind, let him seek out Rosaline. Winter garments must be lined, so must slender Rosaline. <laughs> the sweetest nut of sorrow's rind, such a nut is Rosaline. Oh. <laughs> this is very false gallant verses. Why do you infect yourself with them? Peace, you dull fool, I found on a tree. Truly, the tree yields bad fruit. A peace, I say. Well, here comes my sister reading. Stand aside. Helen's cheek, the matter of heart. Cleopatra's majesty, so it is better part. Sacrificia's modesty, the blossom of many parts. By a heavenly synod was devised, with many faces, eyes, and hearts. To have the touches dearest prize, heaven would that she be gifts should have. And I should live and die her slab of oh, slave. <laughs> Come, Shepherd, we shall make an honorable retreat. <laughs> Didst thou hear these verses? Aye, I heard them all, and more too. For some of them had more feet in them than the verses could bear. That's no matter. 
The feet might bear the verses. I, but the feet were lame and could not bear themselves without the verse, and therefore stood lamely in the verse. But didst thou hear about wondering how thy name should be hanged and carved upon these trees? Well, I was seven of the nine days out of wonder before you came. For look here what I found on a palm tree. Show you who hath done this. Is it a man? And a chain that you once wore about his neck. <gasps> Change you color? Oh, I prithee who? Is it possible? Nay, I prithee with most visionary vehemence. Tell me who it is. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, and most wonderful, wonderful. And yet again, wonderful. But, uh, good faith, I had as lief have been myself alone. <laughs> and so had I. But yet for fashion's sake, I thank you too for your participation. God, by you, let's meet as little as we can. I hope that we may be better strangers. I pray you! Are no more trees with your writing love songs in their barks? I pray you, mar no more my verses with reading them ill favorably. Rosalind is your love's name. Yes. Just. I do not like her name. <laughs> there was no thought in pleasing you when she was christened. Of what? Stature is she of? Just as high as my heart. Ooh, you are full of pretty answers. <laughs> Not so. But I answer you rightly. Will you sit down with me? And we too shall reign against our mistress the world. <laughs> and all our misery. I will chat no breather in the world but myself. Against whom I know most false. The worst fault you have is to be in love. Tis a fault I would not trade for your best virtue. I am weary of you. By my troth, I was seeking for a fool when I found you. He's drowned in the brook. Look but in and you shall see him. 
There I shall see my own figure. I'll tarry no longer with you. Uh, farewell, good senior love. I am glad of your departure. Adieu, Monsieur Melancholy. I will speak to him like a saucer. 